Good morning, everybody. As we go to the Chitas of today, today is Monday, the second reading in the portion of Bahalaischa, chapter 8, verse number 15. The continuation of yesterday after dedicating the Levium. And then the Levian will come to, to service the Beis HaMikdash. We shall purify them. You shall lift them up as a waving. Because they are holy giving. We take B'nai Yisrael from the midst of the Jewish nation. Tachat Pitzas Korechem. Be instead of all the opening of the womb of all the firstborn, and you shall take them to me. Uh, you shall take him to me. Rashi says, Nisunim, Nisunim. Why is there a double expression? Rashi says, Nisunim Lamasa. They are given over, so to say, they're committed. Their job is to carry the base of Midosh. And Nisunim Lashir. They're also given over to sing in the base of Midosh. Pitras, what means Pitras, as she says, is the meaning of the opening, the firstborn. And the firstborn, also the law of a firstborn, it's only when it is a natural birth. The laws of the firstborn. The firstborn amongst the children of Israel are mine. The behemoth, also the animal. The day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. I sanctified themselves to me. Now she says, firstborn are mine by right, for I protected them amongst the Egyptians firstborn and took them for myself. They erred at the golden calf. And now I'm taking the Levium instead of them. I'm taking the Levites instead of the children of Israel, the firstborn of Israel, and then I'm going to give the Levim. The Sunim Lanim, they are given to Adam Levanov to his children. Mitech B'nai Yisrael from the Jewish people. Lavis Avedis B'nai Yisrael to do the service of the children of Israel. Ba'el made in the tent of meeting. Ulachapa B'nai Yisrael and to come and bring forgiveness of the Jewish people. Ulayi B'nai Yisrael Negev. And there should not be in the children of Israel an affliction. B'gashes B'nai Yisrael Lakedesh. When if when the Jewish children, when the Jewish people come close to the base of Midrash. Now she says, it says over here, the children of Israel is mentioned five times in this verse, thus declaring the, the, the affection God has for them. For the mention is repeated in one verse as many times as the five books of the Torah. I saw this in, in Medrash Rabbah. Uh, what does that mean? So they will not need them to approach the holy sanctuary, for they do approach, there'll be a plague. So that's why the Levium surround the base of Migdash and, um, and they protect the base of Migdash from anybody from coming into the base of Migdash. So this is what Meshavan did with Khaladat and the entire Jewish congregation, the Levium to the Levium. Whatever God commanded Moshe, the Levim to the Levim, in Asu Lemnei Yisrael, this is what the Jewish people did. Now she said Moshe presented them, Aaron lifted them, and the, the Jewish people put their hands upon them. Yitzchato Levim, verse twenty-one, the Levim cleansed themselves. They washed their clothes. Aaron lift them as a waving. Now Hashem before God, he brought forgiveness to them. Let them to bring them to cleanse them. Then the Levim came and they did their service in the, in the tent of meeting. Now Adam before Adam, Nebuchadnezzar before his children, as God commanded Moshe, Cain Oslehem, Moshe Ala Levim on the Levim, Cain Oslehem. This is what they did. Now she said, This is to extol the performance of rights that everything was done upon whom it was performed. None of them objected. This was all done with peace and harmony. God spoke to Moshe, saying, 
This is the rule concerning the Levites. Ben Chamesh of Shana from the age of 25 and upwards. Yavel, it's Vetzava, they come to serve. Ba'aveda Salem married in the tent of meeting. Now she says that the, the by a levy, the only thing that disqualifies them is years. If they're too old or too young. But they don't have anything else that disqualifies them like a kayin. Ibn Khamish Vasim Rash says elsewhere in chapter four, verse three, it says from the age of thirty. Over here it says from the age of twenty-five. How do you reconcile it? However, from the age of 25, they come to study the law of the service. They would study for five years. At the age of 30, they would begin to work. From here, we learn that a student who does not experience success in his learning in five years will never experience it. So if the levy couldn't get the Aveda within five years, basically at 30, he was, uh, he was, not, he was, uh, he was disqualified. So he had five-year practice. At the age of 50, he retires. It doesn't work anymore. Well, what kind of work doesn't he work? Like she says, the work of carrying on his shoulders. However, he can return to the work of locking the gates, singing and loading the wagons. So he's not obligated to carry anymore. So, El uh, Yid for 50. This is the meaning he shall minister with his brethren, his brothers, that he's allowed to uh, he can continue to do certain avoid in the base of Midosh. Verse 26, And he shall minister with his brothers, he shall serve with his brothers in the tent of meeting. To keep in charge, but he cannot do physical labor. This is what you should do to Levim, the Mishmaitam in their charge. Now she says, camp around the tent to assemble, to dismantle at the time of travel. And that can complete the Chumash for today. We now go to, to, the, to the middle of the third chapter of Tanya. Now the Rebbe proceeds to demonstrate how this is true and creatures that appear to be tangible by means of an illustration. An illustration of this is the light of the sun. That's why Echsidis gives a lot of the example of Ur. Ur, Ur Hashem. We call it the Ur in Seif. Ur is an important word. And we give it a lot of uh, the Ur Hanishama. We have all this concept of Ur because it's a great example, there's a great illustration for the concept of the sun and the, the, the ray of the sun. So you have see this Ur and Ma'ur. The Ur is the light, the ray of the sun, and then you have the Ma'ur, the illuminary, the Shemesh, the Shemesh itself. Ur Shemesh, for example, the illuminates, illuminates to the earth and all its inhabitants. What is the what is the illuminate the 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 ur, the light that shines? The illumination is the radiance and the light. that spreads from the sun. and we all can see it. We all can see the light of the shemesh. It's, Daytime right now. So we all see the light of the Shemesh. We enjoy the light of the Shemesh. Meir v'al-aret. It shines upon the land of the earth. U'bechalal ha'olim, an expanse of the universe. V'hinei zeh poshut. It's obvious. She'er v'zivazeh. That this light and this radiance. Yesh negankin b'guf v'chayim v'kad ha-Shemesh. It's found within the Shemesh itself. Because it comes from the Shemesh. So since it comes from the Shemesh, so it is a part of the Shemesh. It's also present in the very body in the manner of the gl some globe itself in the sky. And we understand that, that, the, that, the, that the, the sun, the ray of the sun comes from the sun. Actually, uh, there's an expression, one of the reasons why we connect it always to Ur, Ur is always connected to the, to, to the Mur, to the luminary. 
So the, 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 the sun moves away and it becomes night. Because the sun, the ray of the sun is always connected to the sun. Where it can spread forth and shine in such a great distance. Then certainly it can shed light to its own in, in its own place. So if the sun shines upon this earth, that it's daytime right now, it's surely daytime, it's surely the way in it in, in the in, in the sun itself. What happens in the sun itself? The ray of the sun. In the sun. In the sun itself. This ray is not. It's completely not. It's completely nothing. Because it's absolutely non-existent. In relation to the body of the sun. The globe of the sun. Shumaker, which is the source of this light. And this radiance. In so much as this radiance and this light. Because it's only an illumination. It's only illumination from the shine, from the body of the globe itself. But the sun itself is much stronger and greater than this whole shine. Since the sunlight is merely an illumination deriving from the sun, it's in a state of complete nothingness while it's found within the sun's globe itself. One cannot say that within in the sun, the body of the sun, there is sunlight. For the sun itself is found there. And that's it. So over there, it's the sun. It's not about the what shines from the sun. It's the sun. But only in the space of the universe. Under the heavens and the earth. That the, where the body and the sun globe is not present is important, the ray of the sun. And all that's seen is but the illumination that emanates from it. Baruch Hashem. It's daytime here. Because of the sun. And thank God the sun doesn't come too close to the earth because it's hot enough already. So if the sun would come, come an inch closer to the earth, it would talk, we would be burning. So the sun stays in a distance very far away from the earth. And the ray of the sun, Baruch Hashem, we enjoy. And everything in the world enjoys. And the earth enjoys. And the tree enjoys, etc., etc. But they're enjoying the ray of the sun, self And it's And it's not... The ray of the sun that comes from the sun. The sun itself, itself understood that the ray of the sun is nothing to the sun itself. And this light and radiance appears to the eyes of all beholders as actual existence. It's beautiful. It's light. The sun gives off the light of the world. It gives off the light of the world. It gives the warmth of the world. It gives a lot of things that we need in this world. And here the term yesh, existence, daytime, can truly be applied to it. The sunlight and ray, as they appear outside the sun glow, can truly be said to exist in so much as the sun itself is not found there. Where? When it's in the source. In the body of the sun. Over there, this ray is nothing. So over here, this ray of sun is unbelievable. And there's a lot of existence that has from this ray of sun. In the ray of sun, the way it's in the sun, it's nothing. So we understand the yesh The example, er, umar. The er, the light. Umar, it's a luminary. Which the, we think the light itself has its own reality. Its own existence. But the truth is, the light of the sun that comes from the sun within the sun itself is garnished. Over there, there's nothing can apply to it. There's no such thing that within the sun, there's the ray of the sun. Within the sun itself, there's the sun. That is it. It's the sun. And it can only be called not. The ray of the sun within the sun is nothing. 
Because there, the ray of the sun is not an absolutely non-existence. For there, the only, its source. Over there, the sun itself, that's the sun. Which is the luminous body of the sun. It gives light and there's nothing besides it. To sum up, though the sun's ray are surely found within the body of the sun, because if there's no ray within the body of the sun, there wouldn't be a ray, it wouldn't shine on the earth. They can't be said to be exist there. They are found there as a manner of non-existence in a state in which their separate identity is utterly nullified. That which can be dimmed to exist within the sun's globe can be nothing other than the sun itself. And that, Dr. Rebbe is in the middle of his analogy, but as, as we, you guys, I, I said in the beginning, that it's important to know, understand this analogy, because again, it is an important word. Also, it's an important word in the creation of the world. The first day of creation, the Abish to create an Ur. By he Ur, and there was light. And that is the concept. Ur, in the Chsidis, that the first day of creation was an Ur. It was not the light of day because the sun, the sun was not created till the third day. The Ur, the Ur of the first day was Ur of Ayat. The concept of Ur, the aspect of Ur al the concept of Ur al Ur al of the neshama, etc., etc. What we call Hineir Hashem, Nishma Sodom, etc. The concept of light, the true aspect of light. In the, as we express it in Oyer Ein Tzayv, the light of God, Oyer HaTayda, the light of the of, of the Tayda, Oyer HaNeshama, the light of the soul, the light of the world. He should be a light upon the nations, etc. The concept of Oyer, and that's why. It's an important this analogy to understand the concept of Ur er and Mo'ur, er, the concept of the light and its illuminary, which is the, the aspect in this analogy, the concept of the ray of the sun, the way it illuminates from the sun. That even though that Baruch Hashem, we feel the sun and we enjoy, we enjoy this light and the world enjoys this light, but this light really emanates from the sun and within the sun, it's nothing. But nevertheless, within the sun, there's a concept of this Ur that gives the capability to shine, ultimately, to the world. And that the world should feel the beauty of this Ur. That completes the Tanya of the day. Today is the 11th day of the month, which is chapter 60 to chapter 65. And if you do those six chapters, you do the Chitas of the day. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful day. And Amir Shem, we'll see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. We'll continue to learn the Chitas of the day.